Welcome to the Gelato Expert Academy. I'm Luca Musolesi and I will be your guide in the amazing world of gelato. In this video, I want to give you a little bit of an introduction to vegan gelato, starting by defining what we mean with vegan gelato and what is the difference with sorbet. Then we talk about the possible ingredients to use, how to formulate a recipe, and finally, we'll make a delicious pistachio recipe with oat milk. Let's start discussing why we say vegan gelato and not just sorbet. Sorbet is generally a fruit-based gelato that is made with water and nowadays almost never contains dairy products or any other animal products like eggs. So this makes it usually a vegan product. However, there is a substantial difference between sorbet and traditional dairy gelato, which affects the texture and formulation parameters. And this is the fat content and in minor account the protein content, which are extremely relevant in dairy gelato while they are usually not present or just in very small amount in fruit sorbets. This difference affects how we make a formulation and for this reason when I talk about vegan gelato I refer to a product that doesn't have any animal product in it but that does contain a significant amount of fat and or proteins. There is no official or legal definition of vegan gelato so this is just my personal definition, which comes very handy in the moment we have to formulate a recipe, which we will do in a moment, after talking a bit about the ingredients we can use. This video is brought to you by the Gelato Expert Academy, an online platform to learn everything about gelato. So if you like this introduction video and you want to learn more about vegan gelato or gelato in general, check out gelato.expert academy to subscribe to the most complete online course about gelato where you can also find two advanced courses about vegan gelato, but more on this later. What are the ingredients that we can use for our vegan gelato? To make gelato, we always need a source of water. And for vegan gelato, this source can be just regular water, or it can be a plant-based drink. So we can use plant-based drinks like oat, rice, soy, spelt, chufa, and many more. But always remember that besides bringing water, they also come with their own flavor. So it's very important to taste and see what works best for us and for our customer base. In module five of the Gelato Expert Academy, I dive deep into all the details of plant-based drinks and how they are made. But for now, let's move on to the next ingredients for our gelato. The next component that we need is fat. And this can come from nuts, for example, that naturally contain high quantities of fat, or it can come from uh, coconut oil that can be deodorized to be completely neutral in taste or from coconut milk if we are okay with the flavor of coconut. Then we will need some uh, sugars and for this uh, we can use uh, the same sugars as for dairy gelato that can be for example sucrose, dextrose and uh, glucose syrup or maltodextrin. However, what we don't have is lactose that is coming from milk, so we will have to replace that with other sugars that are uh, added. You might want to use only sucrose and dextrose if, for example, you use a high quantity of fibers, which are our next ingredient. Yes, because fibers are an excellent ingredient to reduce the sugar content in a vegan gelato, and at the same time give an excellent texture in terms of smoothness and creaminess. You can avoid using fibers and increase the amount of sugars in gelato, but fibers are healthier and improve the shelf life of the products, so I would definitely recommend using them. At this point, we have to decide what are the flavoring ingredients for vegan gelato, and here only our imagination is the limit. We can use all sorts of nuts, we can use spices and herbs like vanilla, mint, tea, we can use coffee, chocolate, liquors, anything you want. Finally, just like for dairy gelato, we will need a small amount of stabilizers that help the texture of gelato and improve the shelf life. After we decide the ingredients we want to use for our recipe, it's important to consider some parameters that will ensure our recipe has the texture and behavior of a gelato. I'm talking about sugar content, fat content, total solids and freezing point. These parameters are in fact very similar to dairy gelato, and not surprisingly, since our aim is to make a product that is just like a dairy gelato, but plant-based. So we will give some ranges that allow to play with the ingredients to formulate any recipe. 
the first parameter to consider when formulating uh, is uh, sugars, uh, and here we can set our goal between 20 and 25% of total sugars, which include the added sugars and the naturally occurring sugars coming from the use uh, of uh, any ingredient that can, might contain sugars. Then we have to consider a range for the fat content, uh, and on average we can say that uh, we want to stay between 4 and 10%. If we make Italian gelato style, we probably don't want to go above 10%, otherwise we can have some greasiness feeling. Then, a very important parameter is total solids. Total solids count all the carbohydrates, fats, proteins and other things like mineral salts. And to get a smooth and creamy vegan gelato, we definitely want to be above 38% of total solids. Finally we have the freezing point, uh, which I discuss in detail in the Gelato Expert Academy. But this is very useful when we have uh, and we want to make several recipes with similar properties. Just like for daily gelato, we generally want the freezing point uh, to be between minus 2.5 and minus 3.5 uh, degrees Celsius. Now, how do we calculate these parameters? In the Gelato Expert Academy, we use our web app Gelato Passport Plus, uh, of which you can find the link in the description. With Gelato Passport Plus, uh, you can have your own personal database of ingredients uh, where we can add or change an ingredient uh, or its nutritional values. Then we can just add the ingredients in the web app and Gelato Passport Plus will calculate all the parameters you need to formulate and control your recipe. It works on any device, so we can also use it as a quick tool for production while we are in the lab and we can also use it to create nutritional labels for our product. It's now time to formulate a recipe, and what we can do is one of the most popular flavors in Italy, pistachio. For this example, let's make a pistachio recipe with oat milk. In the vegan courses of Gelato Expert Academy, you can find more recipes and variations on the pistachio formulation, and many more. First, we have to decide the ingredients to use, and we already said that we want to use pistachio, which can also be our source of fats, and oat milk as a source of water. Then we will use sucrose and dextrose as main sugars, and then we can use glucose syrups, but for this recipe we will use a specific type of fiber that allows us to reduce the amount of sugars. If you use another type of fiber, you might want to consider also using glucose syrups or maltodextrin. Then we will add some salt to improve the flavor and a gelato stabilizer, which must be vegan as well, of course. At this point, we can start putting our ingredients and check that the formulation parameters are in the ranges that we mentioned before. Now we have here our Gelato Passport Plus app, where we can make the formulation, insert our ingredients and calculate all the values. We already put all the ingredients that we need, starting from the oat milk, in this case we have oatly enriched, but you can use any oat milk, of course. Then we have a pure pistachio paste from Sicily, without any coloring, this is the brand. Then Lessenza, it's a fiber syrup that is specifically good for vegan formulation. But in our courses uh, about vegan gelato, you will see how uh, you can replace this fiber with inulin or with other types of fibers and what are the things that you have to do to replace it. Then we have uh, sucrose, so normal sugar, dextrose uh, to give some more softness and to replace part of the lactose that we are missing from the absence of dairy products, salt uh, because it's good <laughs> with pistachio and a stabilizer. So let's start first uh, from the quantity of pistachio. We want to use 10% of pistachio, which is a good amount to give a lot of flavor, but not too much to make it too expensive. So we write the recipe for one kilo and we have 100 grams. Then we put the ingredients that we already know what is the quantity. For example, stabilizer, this is uh, indicated uh, by the manufacturer of the stabilizer. In this case, it's five grams per kilo. And then salt, this is to our taste. I like to put two to three grams of salt per kilo when I make pistachio, so we can put three grams. Then we will put sucrose and dextrose. Here we have to reach that 20-21% of minimum amount of sugars to make our gelato creamy. And in this case we will have also sugars coming from the oat milk, so we will put 12% of sucrose and around 6% of dextrose. Of course, uh, we can uh, 
modify the balance depending on the sweetness that we want. If we want more sucrose or if we want more dextrose to make it more or less sweet. Finally, of uh, the fiber, l'essenza, we use 7%. In this case, we use quite a big amount because we are not using any glucose syrup or maltodextrin. We could reduce the amount of fibers by adding also glucose syrups or maltodextrin, but we want to keep the label as short as possible in this case and make it simple. So we just use 7% of l'essenza. Beware that with other fibers like inulin, you cannot put that much uh, and get uh, a good result. So you will have to lower and maybe use glucose syrup. Finally, we just have to add our uh, oat milk to reach uh, 1000 grams. So it's 640. And at this point, we can check all the parameters. In terms of sugars, we are just above 21% which is okay, it's not too much, uh, it's not too little, it's in our range uh, as we discussed. Then total solids, very important, is above 38%, we are already at 40%, so we will get a creamy product. And then we can check also the freezing point. In this case, the freezing point is around minus uh, three degrees Celsius, which is exactly in the middle of our range. So we know that this recipe will work and it's now time to try it out in the lab and see if it's good or not. It's now time to have a look at the gelato machine before we start making the gelato. In module 3 of the Gelato Expert Academy you can find all the information about different types of machines and their perfect use. But today we have here a combined machine, a Bravo Trittico, you can find all the information in the description. And what is a combined machine? A combined machine is a machine that has two parts one that can heat and one that can freeze. This is very convenient for vegan gelato, so we can make very different recipes for each flavor and pasteurize them and heat them if they need uh, one by one. So in the upper part, we have our heating cylinder where we can heat our mix. And then when it's ready, we have here a valve called butterfly valve that we can open and the gelato goes uh, down directly from the pasteurizer to the freezing cylinder without going outside of the machine. Then when the gelato is in our freezing cylinder we can close back the valve so here we can already put a second flavor or we can put water to clean if we need and we can run at the same time the pasteurizer and the freezer for a faster production. This machine has two control parts, one for the heating cylinder and one for the freezing cylinder. The red one is for the heating and the blue one is for the freezing. Here we can select the temperature at which we want to pasteurize and if we want, for example, to set an alarm at a certain temperature. And then here in the freezing part we can select different programs and decide at which temperature or at which consistency we want our gelato to be extracted. And then when the gelato is ready, we can open, and you will see in a second when we make it, and extract it from here. And after that, we will use a blast chiller to stabilize the gelato. Why we use a blast chiller uh, is because the temperature at which the gelato comes out uh, is still quite high to be stable. So if we want to preserve the gelato for longer time, a blast freezer will help uh, a lot with this. Now let's prepare our ingredients and put the machine in action, preparing the gelato. It's now time to prepare our gelato. To make the gelato, we simply have to mix all the ingredients together and we first uh, mix the powders and then the liquid parts, then we blend them all together. We heat it to 85 degrees and finally we freeze it. After freezing, we can put it a few minutes in the blast freezer to stabilize the gelato and then it's ready to go to the showcase or to be eaten, of course, or we can leave it for a longer time in a blast freezer and then uh, uh, preserve it for a longer time in our storage. So, uh, starting from the ingredients, here we have uh, all our ingredients for the gelato. So we have our sucrose. And let's start by adding the sucrose. Then we have our dextrose that will help us get a better texture and uh, not uh, a gelato that is not too hard. Then we have 
a little bit of salt. Uh, this is optional, of course, uh, but uh, with pistachio it goes very well, so we want to have it. And finally, we put our stabilizer for gelato. This is a natural stabilizer, so without additives, uh, only fibers, and you can find the information in the description if you're interested. Perfect. Now, we just stir a little bit the powders, so we don't get lumps when we mix. Of course, if we have a high shear blender, we will not have problems uh, of lamps. After this, we can move to our liquid ingredients. So our liquid ingredients are basically three. We have uh, the pistachio paste, which is uh, from Sicily. It's smooth, uh, nicely roasted, uh, and uh, very aromatic. Then we have the oat milk. You can use, of course, any brand. And finally, we have our fiber syrup. This looks a little bit like uh, honey, but it's just uh, vegetable fibers and water. So we start by adding our pistachio. Then we add our fiber syrup. And finally, we had uh, the oat milk. Okay, now I can add my powders that I pre-mixed uh, before. And now we just mix everything very well and then bring it to the machine, heat it to 85 degrees and then freeze it. My pistachio mix is ready, so I can now put it here to pasteurize it at 85 degrees. Okay, I can start the pasteurization process. The mix is ready, so I can uh, open the valve and uh, start my freezing process. The gelato is now ready, so we can take a plastic spatula and extract it. We can first start opening the door then push the extraction button. Then we can go faster. The gelato is ready, we can leave it a few minutes in the blast chiller. Okay, after a few minutes in the blast chiller, we can check our gelato and see how it is. And uh, here is our gelato. You can see it's very smooth and creamy, so we can just make a little cup. There you go. It's really smooth, really creamy. You cannot really feel the oatmeal taste. Just very strong pistachio taste. So, perfect, I would say. In this short course, we have seen an introduction to how to formulate and produce vegan gelato. If you are interested and want to learn more, you can check out uh, the courses on vegan gelato from the Gelato Expert Academy. In Module 5, you can learn all the theory and the formulation techniques in depth, 
while in the Vegan Gelato Masterclass you will have a big recipe book with detailed production videos. If you are new to the gelato world, I suggest subscribing to the module 1, 2 and 5 to have a good knowledge of the ingredients and formulation for gelato and vegan gelato. You can find all the links in the description and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos and free courses. See you in the next video!